Hello, I'm back. <laughs> and I like a bad penny. Here I am again. And today, what I'm going to tell you talk about is uh, extinction. And in particular, what should an extinction procedure be? Now, that's a question. <laughs> Uh, what is the extinction procedure or what in Pavlovian or instrumental condition? Everybody can answer that. Any undergraduate psychology student knows that the answer to that. But what I'm going to raise is the possibility that what is frequently used as the extinction pr procedure may not be the one that you want to use if you want to study extinction. So that may not make a whole lot of sense, <laughs> but I hope it will by the time we get to the end. So if we may look at the first slide. So it, uh, things often are a little simpler in, in the framework of Pavlovian conditioning. So in Pavlovian conditioning, we know what acquisition is, right? That's pretty straightforward. Present a CS followed by a US. You probably are all sick of that concept by now. Okay, so what is the extinction procedure? Well, you also know that. And uh, if you ask anybody, if the most sophisticated neuroscientist, what's the extinction procedure for, for a Pavlovian conditioning, they're going to tell you, well, you present the CS by itself. Okay, and so here is my question to you. Is that the correct procedure? Well, it depends on what you're trying to extinguish. So, and uh, we, I think <laughs> about, uh, and I'm not unique in this respect, I think about Pavlovian conditioning as forming an association or learning a relationship between the CS and the US. And the relationship is that if, once you encounter the condition stimulus, the U.S. will soon occur. Uh, well, if that is what Pavlovian learning is, if Pavlovian learning is, involves a CSUS relation, if you want to disrupt that, extinguish that, then you should use a procedure in which that relation no longer holds. But in every other respect, your pre extinction procedure should be the same as the conditioning procedure. And that would be a CSUS unpaired procedure. So uh, an, uh, in an unpaired procedure, you disrupt the relationship, but you don't disrupt the frequency of encounter with the CS or the US. So that... <laughs> Uh, that's my recommendation for an extinction procedure in Pavlovian conditioning. And uh, very few people have looked at that. And, and those who have, have found that extinction is much, much slower in a CSUS unpaired procedure than it is in a CS alone procedure. And that tells you that uh, uh, the typical CS alone procedure does more than just disrupt the relationship between the CS and the US. If you use a CS alone procedure, uh, you're missing all the sensitization or activating effects of presenting USs. And uh, uh, those uh, are an important part of learning the independence or lack of relationship between the CS and US, if that's what the intent of extinction is. So that's, I invite you to rethink how you might approach designing an extinction procedure for Pavlovian conditioning. How about instrumental conditioning? The next slide talks about instrumental conditioning or operant conditioning, where the acquisition is the same as, uh, or is, is obvious, right? You make a response, results in a reinforcing outcome. Oh, and now uh, what's the typical extinction procedure? The typical extinction procedure is one in which you make a response and nothing happens. 
Well, uh, is that the right extinction procedure? And we come back to uh, asking the question, what it is that you want to extinguish? Well, if you think about acquisition as learning uh, the relationship between a response and a reinforcer, R and O, then extinction should be a procedure in which that relationship no longer holds, which would be a procedure in which the response and the reinforcer both occur, but now in an unpaired uh, kind of fashion. And if you use that as an extinction procedure, you would find that responding persists a lot, extinction is a lot slower than uh, in the typical procedure. Uh, there are various other uh, alternatives that you might consider as possible extinction procedures. And uh, the next slide uh, illustrates that if you think, the more deeply you think about this, the more complicated it becomes because this slide illustrates all the possible relationships that can be learned in an operant or instrumental procedure. So that if you design an extinction procedure, you have to try to figure out you, what are you trying to extinguish? Are you trying to extinguish the SR association? Are you trying to extinguish the SO association? Are you trying to extinguish the RO association? or the S slash RO hierarchical association. So the question of uh, what, how you design an extinction procedure from a theoretical perspective, uh, that question does not have an obvious answer and it requires, it invites us uh, to think about extinction in a more sophisticated fashion than is typically the case in uh, applied behavioral analysis or in uh, behavioral neuroscience. There's a lot of work on neural mechanisms of extinction. Now, most of that work doesn't tell us <laughs> whether those neural mechanisms involve the extinction of the SR, extinction of the SO, extinction of the RO, and so on. So without a, a more sophisticated behavioral analysis of what you're trying to extinguish, I would suggest that it's kind of difficult to interpret what the neuroscience of extinction is. Anyway, I know this will be a message that is not welcome or it creates problems for people, uh, but I thought it's a message that's certainly worth thinking about. So that's my story for today. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>